Welcome to Nani Notes. Well, let's follow along here on the paper I provided for you. I left you some blanks so we can fill in. If this is your textbook, well, you're in my class, and it says here, um, slopes of parallel lines. In our book, that's known as postulate 17. I left it blank here so we could fill it in together. So right along with me. Okay, I guess I'm typing, but you get the idea. In a plane, or in a coordinate plane, comma, two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if, if and, that's that biconditional statement. So the logic, this uh, is going to work in both directions, if and only if they have the same slope. And again, bi-directional. So if two lines are parallel, they have the same slope. If two lines have the same slope, they are parallel. Now, there is the exception. Notice it says two non-vertical. Well, what if they're vertical? Well, okay, and there's our exception. So. Let's work this out. We're going to use two different lines here. I'm going to call them G and H respectively. And um, now if you're taking notes, maybe you'll, you'll write one in pencil and one in pen. Maybe you've got colored pencils. That really makes them jump out. I like to use red and blue. So um, let's start here. I'm going to graph this equation. I know we can do this. And I gave you easy equations so uh, we can get the concept. We pass through the y-intercept of negative 4 up to over three, up to over three. That's a slope of two thirds. We've been there before. Down to back three, right? Uh, right there and down to back three. Now that's how we've, well, we have enough films on that, but we just, that's this pretty simple linear equation and where we graphed a line in the slope intercept form. And I'm going to call this line G. Now, what we're going to do that's different, we're going to say there's a line H that's parallel to G, and it passes through this point. We're not starting at the y-axis anymore. Negative 6, 2, well, that's over here, point S. Now, okay, I'll tell you the truth. I made this one come out nice for you, but follow along. Let's, get the, let's practice two different things. First, we'll write an equation. Then we'll graph it, see how it comes out. Now, the point slope form of a line looks like this. y minus y1 equals the slope times the quantity x minus x1. So we're going to replace, well, we, what is x1, y1? That's the point. That's my given point s. x1 is the negative 6. y1 is the 2. So let's go ahead and fill those in. Um, we can replace x1 with negative 6, y1 with 2. What about m? what it says there. Well, it's got to be the same slope. That's the two-thirds. So I'm going to make my substitution. Again, the two-thirds comes from the same slope as the blue line, the negative six, and the two, x1, y1. Now, we wouldn't really write it this way because we take the, I mean, the opposite of a negative is a positive. Oops, we would write it, clean it up and write it like that. That looks much better. So that's a legitimate form right there known as the point slope. And you could say you're done. That's a legitimate answer for an equation of the line. And um, I know you guys like this rise. And if you don't remember, well, we know our rise over run up two over three. But let's just, let's graph this guy first, up two over three. And you don't really need to do this up two over three because you could. Well, that's, that's a little visual. Okay, we did it. And I'm going to graph this. And these two lines are parallel. I'm going to say that this is line H. Now, let's do a little algebra because it's fun. I want you to take this point slope and convert it into slope intercept. Half you guys will do that anyway. We're going to take 
the, through the distributive property, two thirds of x is two thirds x. Two thirds of six, well, that's going to be um, four, right? So that's the distributive property. Then what do we do? Well, let's add two to both sides of the equation and heavens to Murgatroyd's, look at that. That is the equation of the red line. And what do you know? It goes through zero six. That's the y-intercept. That's yeah, pretty cool, isn't it? So that's that's an example. And don't worry, you'll get a whole sheet. You'll get you'll be doing a lot of practice on this. But this is just for your notes. And now, um, hey, let's talk about this exception. Um, we said any two non-vertical lines. What if they are vertical? Well, let's deal with it. And again, I'm going to rewrite that exception, which says any two vertical lines are parallel. Neat. So we're going to graph line G at x equals negative 3. Now we've already gone through a bunch of this graphing and we know what happens at x is negative 3. Well, x is negative 3, y could be 0. x is negative 3, y could be 4. Heck, y could be negative 7. y can be anything because this is the vertical line. All right? Now, if I want a line, and I'm going to call that G, I want a line passing through 5, 2. That's parallel. And it makes sense. Well, let's see what happens here. I'm guessing that it says right here, any two vertical lines are parallel. Conversely, if two lines are parallel, well, I guess one's vertical, the other has to be. So I'm going to draw another vertical line. And I'm going to snap. And we'll call this line H. Do we have an equation for H? Oh, I think we do. And I think we could just say, well, now, why is this an exception? Do they, do they have the same slope? Well, we can't say the, the slope because both of these slopes are, now let me, let's make a little note of this. And um, that's why we have to have this special exception right here. Because in the case of vertical lines, the slopes are undefined. So we just say the vertical lines are parallel. Okay, now we always have an exception to the rule. Hey, let's, let's go through our next two. We only got two more. Let's look at perpendicular. Ready? Okay, sticking with our textbook, we're going to jot down our postulate 18 in our McDougall Littell textbook in our high school geometry. And I'm just going to write down in, write with me, a coordinate plane, comma, two lines are perpendicular if and only if, there's that biconditional part again, Their slopes are, all right, now I'm going to take a phrase from a previous textbook because it just says it so well, opposite, opposite reciprocals. And I really want to highlight that too. Maybe we could, you know, highlight that, maybe make that jump out a little bit. Ooh, no, I don't know. That doesn't jump out. How about that? Yeah. And furthermore, furthermore, vertical lines, this is the exception part, and are are 
perpendicular to each other. Well, okay. Well, just like the last time, we know that there's this funky exception, and that has to do with the vertical and the horizontal lines. And I, we're guessing we know why that is, but let's let's just get let's go to town on this one. Let's graph this one, then we'll talk about this whole opposite reciprocal business. Let's just graph the blue first. The y-intercept at 3, and it's got a slope of negative 5 halves. Down 5 over 2. Down 5 over 2. Or up 5, back 2. No, it won't. I can't snap a point there. Ugh. So we will graph this line. That's going to be our line J. Well, I guess I can probably get it right about there. A steep negative slope like that. Now, opposite reciprocals. What's the opposite of up? That's down. What's the opposite of negative? That's positive. Um, reciprocal? Reciprocal of 5 over 2 is going to be 2 over 5. So the opposite reciprocal, and let's say, I'm going to write this down here, m, our slope is going to be positive, and we'll call that 2 over 5. Now, our textbook likes to say this a different way. I believe they like to say, well, the product of these two slopes is negative one. And you know, I should have, I didn't have that already made for you. So let's, let me make it really fast. I'm going to say, if I were to take the first, the given slope, that is negative, the blue line has a slope of negative five over two. The red line is going to have a slope of, well, let's see, positive 2 over 5. And when I multiply them together, that is their product is, of course, negative 1. So that's another way you'll see it in the textbooks. The products of the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative 1. Remember that um, and any number times it's reciprocal is 1. Any number times it's opposite reciprocal is negative 1. Okay, I've been going on and on about this for a little bit too long, so let's, let me move this out of the way. Maybe I'll move this over here for now. So, well, that's going to be in the way. How about there? And uh, let's graph this guy. Negative 5, negative 6. Negative 5, negative 6. There's tangos down there. And just like last time, we're going to make the substitution, and we'll clean this up. We'll uh, write it in the proper form. y plus 6, x plus 5, and again, that is, that's bona fide. That is the point-slope form, but I know that some of you are saying, well, uh, just for algebra's sake, come on, let's convert it. It won't always convert nicely to points uh, to slope-intercept, but I set you up here. 2 fifths of x is 2 fifths x, 2 fifths of 5. 2 fifths times 5 is 2. So when I distribute, I get this. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides of each equation, and that's what I get. That would be the equation. This is the equation point-slope form, an equation in point-slope form of line, um, of line k. And this is line k and slope intercept. If we were to graph it out, let's go ahead, up 2 over 5. Up 2 over 5. And you're going to say, beautiful. Why would you say beautiful? Of course, does it look perpendicular? Yeah, it does. Because this, this line k has a slope that's the opposite reciprocal. Let's verify. Where's the y-intercept? Negative 4, just like it says there. Now, one thing you might find interesting, well, I guess you guys solve simultaneous equations. See, they, their intersection is a non-integral value. That's kind of fun, too. But we didn't ask for that. We're just trying to figure out these uh, 
perpendicular and parallel and perpendicular lines. Hey, and I know you learned this in Algebra 1, but good review anyway. Hey, one, one more, one more um, uh, example, and we're done with our notes. Let's look at this example, at this, uh, the opposite reciprocal business. Again, perpendicular lines. What about our one exception? We say vertical lines and horizontal lines are perpendicular to each other. And this is, we've already hinted at this, we already know what the problem is, because vertical lines have an undefined slope. What's the, what's the reciprocal of undefined? I don't know. You can't do that. Horizontal lines have a zero slope. What's the reciprocal of zero? Well, that's a tough one. So we can't, we're just going to say horizontal and vertical are perpendicular. Let's graph these. Y equals three. I guess y equals three, we already know, you know um, we know that that is a horizontal line because anywhere along there, any value there, x can be anything, but y is equal to three. We'll call that line j. How about a line k passing uh, perpendicular to j, passing through w at negative two, negative five? Well, there's my w, as I like to say. And we're saying, well, if they're perpendicular, I guess it's going to be, this guy has to be the vertical line. And let's put it like that. Can we write an equation for that line? Oh, yeah. I think we got this. Let's, um, let's write this nice and big. We're going to say x equals negative 2. And that's going to be the equation for line k. Now, what's really interesting with this is that, you know, you, it, I mean, it just about solves itself if you wanted to know what is the intersection of this line. Well, it's where x equals negative 2 and y equals 3. So the intersection of these two would be at the point negative 2, 3. That's where these two lines meet, if you are curious of that. And there you go. Um, well, that's going to conclude our notes. Make sure you get this done, get them turned in, and uh, work on your assignment. And thank you for watching Nani Notes.